Hi, my name is Ned, and I'm the host of Black Box Online Radio. Welcome to the debunking series, where I'm going to be talking about some suspects whom I absolutely do not think were the Zodiac Killer. First, I would like to give a shout out to YouTube user Kevin Bowen, who requested today's episode saying, Zodiac debunked for the suspect Sandy. Sandy is a very difficult suspect to debunk because, for starters, we don't know his real name, we don't know his real age, we don't know any of the specific details about him. But if what we have gathered about Sandy is correct, then let's look at some reasons about why Sandy would not be a suspect, or a credible suspect rather, in the Zodiac mystery. Point number one. Sandy is only really connected to a single crime in the world of the Zodiac Killer, and that is the 1963 murders of Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards. But before we even get to the Domingos Edwards murders, we have to go back one day earlier to June 3rd of 1963. Shortly after midnight, to the best of our knowledge, Sandy, along with two other guys, J.C. Reed and James Coleman, went to the trailer of a man named Vern Smith. They knocked on the door, woke him up, and they said that they ran out of gas and they needed help. Vern Smith agreed to help them, and while he was filling a gas can, Sandy either snapped or had a calculated plan all along. He pulled out a knife and stabbed Vern Smith, killing him. That happened on June 3rd of 1963. J.C. Reed and James Coleman then searched Vern Smith's clothes, and they found that he had $360 on him. Sandy must have been somewhat apart from them at the time, because they lied to Sandy and said they only found $60 instead of $360. They each took $20, so they told Sandy. So Sandy left with $20. J.C. Reed and James Coleman said they wanted to get away from this guy, because they thought he was too crazy, so to speak, for lack of a better term. He had just murdered someone in what was supposed to be a simple robbery, their side of the story. The next day you have the murders of Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards, which um, would have been maybe about 36 hours later, the early afternoon of June 4th of 1963. There is a double murder that took place near Gaviota State Park, near Santa Barbara, California, on the beach, coast side. Now, this is a very different crime. Sandy killed Fern Smith with a knife by stab wounds. Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards were shot. They were gunned down. The perpetrator had a knife, and we know this because he cut Linda Edwards' swimsuit right down the middle, opened it up, and exposed her breasts. They aren't completely certain when that happened. But that's a cold, methodical, and calculating crime. And I say this because the killer brought pre-cut lengths of rope. The killer had a handgun and ammunition. The killer brought a knife, instructed Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards to be tied up, and I believe it's actually had Linda Edwards tie up Robert Domingos, tie his hands behind his back. Very different crimes than what Sandy did. Now, I have a problem anytime somebody is going to propose someone who committed a murder, like the murder of Vern Smith as the Zodiac Killer. Sandy was a thug. He was a criminal thug. He was somebody who committed that crime, the murder of Vern Smith, for profit. And as I said, he may have had a plan all along to do that and simply was a psychopath. Or it may have just been a moment of adrenaline where he lost control and took the crime too far. And then he stabbed Vern Smith to death. He's a criminal thug in all scenarios. The person who committed the Domingos Edwards murders in my opinion, was much more calculating, had a much higher sense of mental awareness, and was much more focused on committing the actual crime, as opposed to some impulsive moment of judgment. And definitely, definitely the Domingo Sedwich murders was not a robbery. The motive is still questionable to this day. However, I'd also like to draw attention to something else. If you look at the Wanted poster, Sandy is listed as being 5 feet 8 inches tall and 150 pounds. Now, while this doesn't immediately exclude somebody, I definitely think that that's also unlikely that Sandy committed the Domingo Edwards murders. 
because Robert Domingos was a football player and he, his body was dragged from the area where he was shot and gunned down to a seaside shack nearby. The killer then proceeded to try and set the shack on fire after dragging both Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards. I don't think that someone who was 5 feet 8 inches tall and 150 pounds would have done that. I know this because I'm 5 feet 8 inches tall, and when I was 17 or 18 years old, I weighed 150 pounds. Would I have done that? Nope. Granted, Sandy and I were different people, but I think that he is too small to have been the perpetrator at the Domingos Edwards shooting. And the most important thing of all is that the Domingos Edwards event is the only thing that can truly connect Sandy to the Zodiac Killer mystery. But it is an unconfirmed Zodiac event. It is a non-canonical crime. And longtime BBOR listeners will know that I often use this expression. I often talk about this. It's using the unconfirmed to prove the unconfirmed. I mean, there are a lot of similarities between the Gaviota shooting, the murders of Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards, and the Lake Berryessa stabbing on September 27th of 1969. It's still an unconfirmed incident, non-canonical crime. So, what is the thought process that's going on here? You don't know who the Zodiac Killer is. You don't know if Sandy committed the Domingo Edwards murders. Therefore, Sandy is the Zodiac Killer? Sandy is one of those suspects that is hanging by an absolute thread. Because if Sandy doesn't have a connection to the Domingo Edwards murders, there's no reason to incorporate him into the Zodiac Killer mystery, to the best of my knowledge at this time. So, it's almost, he's almost an irrelevant suspect. I can completely understand why people think Sandy could be a suspect. All right, he commits the murder of Vern Smith on June 3rd, 1963. These guys, J.C. Reed and James Coleman, want to get away from him. They think that he's dangerous. So Sandy then goes off on his own. He makes his way to a seaside shack nearby, spends the night there, finds a twenty two caliber gun with four boxes of ammunition. Then he sees Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards on the beach, and he decides to approach them and attack them. I can completely follow that narrative, but I do think that he is too small to be the perpetrator. I also believe that there is no solid way of connecting him to do that. That's just storytelling or just guessing. The only thing you can say about Sandy is that, yes, he was a murderer, yes, he was a homicidal maniac, and he is somewhat nearby, not even in the same area. He would have had to have gone a considerable distance over the early a.m. hours of June 3rd, 1963. But that's all unconfirmed, and it's using the unconfirmed to prove the unconfirmed. For a while, I was somewhat fascinated by the theory that the Zodiac was doing something about what I call coming full circle, starting with the murder of Ray Davis in 1962, and then using that as a way to always remembering that one and paying homage to that crime with the murder of Paul Stein on October 11th of 1969. Ray Davis was a taxi driver, Paul Stein was a taxi driver, and then the Domingo Edwards murders happened in 1963. The same, very similar to the Lake Berryessa stabbing on September 27th of 1969. The last two confirmed Zodiac incidents are matching up with these two other crimes that occurred in the early 1960s. And it's almost like it's going full circle. But the problem with that theory is, if Sandy is your guy, how does the murder of Vern Smith fit into any of that? Vern Smith was murdered for profit. Vern Smith was murdered in an act of impulsive rage. I don't think the Zodiac Killer did that. Instead, I think that the Zodiac Killer was much more about being methodical, knowing what was going to happen, and that the Zodiac was trying to blindside people who wouldn't be necessarily able to fight back. Not stabbing a guy outside of a trailer for $20! I just don't see any evidence of that in any of the Zodiac crimes. No evidence of that type of behavior in the Domingo Edwards murders. And here's also something else that would perhaps not be the strongest connection to the Domingo Edwards crimes. It's quite possible that the Domingo Edwards murders is not genuine Zodiac activity, but instead, somebody saw Robert Domingo and Linda Edwards on the beach. Maybe they saw their car 
park first and then they went down to the beach where they were staying in that seaside shack that was attempted to have been set on fire. And it was a sexual assault gone wrong. That the perpetrator wanted them tied up, first instructing Linda Edwards to tie up Robert Domingos and then tying up Linda Edwards himself and then cut down her swimsuit with a knife to sexually assault her. But Robert Domingos was able to break free. He starts punching the assailant and then they're able to get away for a while. The assailant then grabs his twenty two caliber gun and just starts firing some bullets at them because I could agree with Michael Cole on this author of the Zodiac Revisited trilogy when he said that it's almost as if the Domingo Edwards murders was a very well planned crime, but even if it was well planned, things can still go wrong, like that Robert Domingo's breaking free and fighting back. So then this guy is unloading twenty six bullets at Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards, killing them both. And then it's just panicking, oh my goodness, what do I do? Drags their bodies to the seaside shack, attempts to set it on fire to cover up the crime, cover up the evidence, unable to do so, because he's just striking matches at this little tarp that is hanging over the door, unsuccessful to set it on fire. Robert Domingos was dragged along his backside, and Linda Edwards was dragged... No, Linda Edwards was dragged on her back, and Robert Domingos was dragged across his stomach. So we do not know if Linda Edwards was... um had her swimsuit cut at the beach, or post-mortem in the seaside shack. Being clear, Robert Domingos was dragged on his stomach, Linda Edwards was dragged on her back, so the, um, it really is quite uncertain when the swimsuit was cut. Maybe the authorities know something that they haven't shared with us yet. That also doesn't seem like the Zodiac Killer trying to burn the bodies of the victims. Absolutely no evidence of that in the canonical crimes. Cutting someone's shirt open or swimsuit open to reveal their breast. Absolutely none of that in the canonical crimes. And also, the real only connection is the pre-cut lengths of rope and having instructing somebody to tie someone up. Yeah, you could be like, the Zodiac used a twenty two caliber gun as well. Big deal. Zodiac had other firearms. That's just um, nitpicking at irrelevant information. So it says me, it's not like all the Zodiac crimes were committed with a twenty two. The Zodiac also used a 9 millimeter at Blue Rock Springs in the Stein murder, and possibly was carrying a forty five at Lake Berryessa when he pulled out the magazine clip to show Brian Hartnell. So, I don't even really think that Domingo Edwards crime was the Zodiac Killer. I don't think that. Does that eliminate Sandy? Almost certainly, because what other connection does he have to the Zodiac mystery if not for the Domingo Edwards using the unconfirmed to prove the unconfirmed? That type of thinking simply does not work. Not to mention... I don't believe that it was a type of impulsive criminal thug robbery that was done for profit. I mean, the Zodiac didn't have any of those real behaviors. The Zodiac didn't even take the money that Brian Hartnell had on his picnic blanket or something like that at Lake Berryessa. I simply do not believe that Sandy was the Zodiac killer. But thank you so much for requesting this one. And you guys left a lot of great requests last time on the episode about Louis Myers on a whole big list of requests coming in. Awesome. And if there's um, anything that you would like to hear about or any suspects that you would like covered in this weekend debunking series, put your ideas down below. Thank you so much for listening. You can always like, subscribe, and tune in on Mondays for a regular segment about the Zodiac Killer. And Wednesday is the Ask Me Anything, and Friday is the Anything Goes segment here on Black Box Online Radio. I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you.